It's been a year since it happened, and we will never forget the incident. If you love animals, this video will be difficult for you to watch. Let me ask you a question before starting the video. Who was the first residents of the Earth, our planet, humans, or animals? If so, who has more rights to live on this planet? Let me know your opinions in the comment section. If you ask me the same, I would say that it depends. Anyone who takes care of prosperity and protects from the destruction of the planet has the right. The mortality rate of animals is less than humans, according to the research of the natural death of animals. Well, one or few animals can die at a time naturally. But what if a huge number of them die together? I'm sure that would be a disaster or destruction which cannot be predicted or controlled in a moment. Today, we are going to talk about one of the scariest disasters that ever happened in the history of mankind. The Australian bushfires, which took the lives of billions of animals. Plug in the headphone, keep up the volume, and you are watching The Complete Animal Channel. Life on Planet. Even before the challenges of COVID-19, Australia was hit hard by bushfires during summer 2019-20. According to the Annual Climate Statement of the National Bureau of Meteorology, 2019 was Australia's hottest and driest year which was ever recorded. Australia had six of its hottest single days in a row in 2019. The hottest temperature recorded anywhere in Australia in 2019 was in Mel Arbor, in South Australia, where it reached 49.9 degrees Celsius in 2019 December. Bushfires in Australia were uncontrolled. The fires burned grasses, scrubland, bush, forested area, animals, and everything else. Up to 19 million hectares were burned, with 12.6 million hectares primarily forest and bushland. That's scary. Do you know the main reason behind this? It was caused by a climate phenomenon called a positive Indian Ocean Dipole, which was unusually strong, as well as human-induced climate change. Sadly, yes, human-induced climate change. Some reports indicate that a change in climate could also be contributing to the ferocity of the 2019-20 fire conditions, making the country's fire season longer and much more dangerous. Strong winds also promote the rapid spread of fires by lifting burning embers into the air. However, scientists say that global warming is making bushfires burn more intensely and frequently, and believe the 2019-2020 fires have already released approximately 350 million tons of carbon dioxide, and it will take longer than 100 years to reabsorb all the carbon present there so far. Also, the rainfall for the year was below average over most of Australia. What about animals? It is estimated that from June 2019 to February 2020, bushfires led to the deaths of at least 33 people including 9 firemen and wiped out over 3,000 homes from one side of the country to the other and over 3 billion animals. You heard it right, 3 billion animals. This figure includes mammals, birds, and reptiles. Many of these animals were burned to death in the fires. Altogether, 143 million warm-blooded animals, 2.46 billion reptiles, 180 million birds, and 51 million frogs were hurt, with many others dying later due to the depletion of food and shelter resources, and predation by feral cats and red foxes. Koalas are perhaps the most vulnerable because they are slow-moving. In extreme fires, koalas tend to climb up to the top of a tree and curl into a ball where they become trapped. The worst losses were on Kangaroo Island in South Australia, where the conservation group estimates more than 41,000 koalas were killed or harmed by the ferocious fires. Many wild animals and some farm animals have been killed directly by the flames. We can see the evidence with our own eyes, distressing images of burned kangaroos and koalas, and videos of dead animals on the sides of the roads, have circulated online over the weeks. 
they are heartbreaking. You can see many animals running to save their lives. A horse tries to move away from nearby bushfires at a residential property. A kangaroo rushes past a burning house in Kanjoa on New Year's Eve. The whole concept of an ecosystem is about connectivity. Across whole forests, there are millions of individuals and hundreds of different species in those forests that all rely on each other. And if you lose one, it's like a link in a chain. You then lose the others that it is connected to. Now that the fires are out, it's time to focus on the long road to recovery and future-proofing our country for the fire seasons ahead. As we struggle with this global pandemic, there's some tremendous change in our environment. I am sorry to say, nature is reviving. Our environment was not required our presence, but I'm afraid to say, nature needed our absence. We don't have enough knowledge to protect nature, or we pretend that we don't have so many forms of life, so many forms of energy, so much change from the very first day of the Earth. Humans, the most intelligent species on Earth, our process of growth reach beyond galaxies. We humans don't like to be the same. Billions of inventions per day. New ideas brought us here in this new era. But does anyone know one fact? We are consuming our planet. Since billions of years, our planet Earth is sacrificing one by one each day. We are not lucky enough to see and feel how the Earth was billions of years ago. But today, we have the technology to create the visual experience of the Earth billions of years ago. What has happened to Earth since these periods? Humans became selfish. That's what happened. If we are consuming food from one side, we have the knowledge that we have to create the consumed food from another side. But are we trying to regenerate the Earth, our home? Now, this period can be marked in history as a world epidemic period. The whole Earth facing the problem together. The lockdown, the first time the whole world took a break. No sound in public. No traffic, no vehicles, no factories. Complete rest for both humans and Earth. But something strange happened at this time. The world's busiest cities became the world's calmest cities. Lockdown cleaned up the most polluted cities. Fresh air all over the places. Earth started healing herself. A natural restoration. From New Delhi to Milan, the air has become cleaner. In the northeastern U.S., nitrogen dioxide pollution is down by 30%, while in Rome, air pollution levels from mid-March to mid-April are down 49% from a year ago. Residents in some cities have also begun to notice animals turning up in strange places and at unusual times, with coyotes seen along downtown Chicago's Michigan Avenue and near San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. Goats were spotted in a town in Wales, and a puma was found roaming the streets of Santiago, Chile. So it was our absence, which made Earth started regeneration, which restored the cycle of the ecosystem. We, humans, are not only utilizing but also polluting our Earth. Our blue planet is not only ours. It belongs to all forms of life. Even microscopic bacteria have specific rights on Earth. Humans are the dominant species, so we are exploiting the resources. A tiger is a killer. It kills for food. Even though the tiger is not damaging our ecosystem, but we are damaging by destroying each resource. By polluting air, we are giving a common threat to birds and animals. We humans will create artificial air if there is no fresh air. But animals and birds can't. We will cultivate food in our homes if we want it. But animals use natural resources for their existence. At last, if we can't live here, we will search for another planet to migrate to. As of now, the Earth is the one and only unique planet where all life forms can live. Let's start restoring our planet. Survival is the ultimate goal for all beings in this world. There are so many extinct species of animals from past centuries. If we don't open our eyes to our surroundings, more animals are going to be in the line. Let's remember what great Albert Einstein stated once. If the bee disappears from the surface of the Earth, man would have no more than four years left to live. 